Hey guys, Pat here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, even when you get broken glass. <laughs> so yesterday, that piece of glass down there mysteriously broke. I don't know if it's vandalous chickens or what it is. Now, when that glass broke, there's chickens in here, and so every now and then there's a, a rock in here. That could be the guilty party right there. Sometimes they kick and scratch, and they got pretty powerful legs. Kick that up, and that hit that glass, that could very well break it. I have another piece of glass in the shop, and what I'll do is I will remove all the old glass, and that little retainer board there and there's four of them there's one on the two sides top and bottom and I'll remove those remove the glass take measurements and I have a piece of glass in the shop that I can use um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to cut that and I'll take you through the process that uh, I do to cut glass so we got the chickens in the background making the chicken song uh, they're laying eggs over there so that's good These little crowbars work nice for this kind of kind of work. So I'll remove all the old caulk, move all the old nails, clean this up in here. Before you guys say something in the comments, seems like there's always somebody out there that thinks that I'd probably unaware of PPE but I should be wearing safety glasses and I should be wearing gloves I know it it's not a safety video it's just a it's just a video of what I'm doing and uh, it's a good idea to wear that stuff and sometimes I do the moment that you don't that's when you get hurt but hey you know I like living life on the edge now we got my helper Okay guys, we're back in the shop, and what I'm doing now is I'm cleaning off any glue and any bumps that might be on the table from previous glue ups that I've done here, so little bumps of glue and whatnot. I'm just going through and making sure that there's nothing protruding upright. This isn't actually the best surface to actually be cutting glass on but uh, it's the best surface I have so that's what I'm going to try to work with here any little bumps that I can find so I'm hoping that I find them all but we're definitely going to find out so now I have to get the glass up here and lay it down nice and gentle glass has a little bit of flexibility to it but you don't really want it flexing too much And in a position to where I can I can score it easy. So now what I gotta do is I have to get my cutter and get a straight edge to go across here. I have a thin piece of quarter inch birch plywood. My mark is right here. So this is a glass cutter, and you have this little wheel on the very end of it, and that's the part that's gonna be doing the scoring on the glass. It scores the glass, so then you can snap it, because that's going to be the weakest point of the glass. These little uh, square cutouts here are for putting on the glass edge, and if you have a score that's really close to the edge, if I score on the top of this glass, then I can just take that ball and tap on the bottom of the glass all the way across there. In most cases, that will just snap right off in your hand. 
So I'm not going to use that technique for a longer cut like this because I'm going to utilize the weight of the glass actually to finish it snapping off and you'll see that. But if you have a smaller cut like cutting around a corner sometimes you can use you can use these different size notches in here for different thicknesses of glass to to crack and to finish off a break. So you got this ball and you've got these little notches in here and then you also have that little wheel. So this wheel's for cutting. This is for snapping glass off and this is for actually finishing to help break the glass along that cutting that the, the small wheel has done. What I have is a long piece of quarter inch plywood and on the far end I have a heavy box not sitting on the glass but just sitting on the plywood to keep my straight edge nice and straight along this line. And so now what I have to do is I want to bring bring this in to where I have maybe three thirty seconds of an inch out away from the edge of the glass cutter to the center of the cut cutting wheel or the scoring wheel. So then there's a standoff between the line and the edge of my straight edge. You can see that gap right there. So that's right at the same width. Okay, so once we get that lined up, I clamp all this into place. Again, I'm not clamping against the glass. We don't want to do that. We don't want to apply too much pressure actually on the glass. You kind of see how that floats a little bit. You can have this touching the glass, that's fine. You just don't want to have a lot of weight on this that might interfere with your cutting. So I'll double check, make sure that my gap is correct. I'm actually cutting this glass an eighth of an inch smaller than what the rough opening is for the frame. That way there's a, enough room for this to, you know, for the wood to shrink and swell, uh, for flexibility, and so the glass won't bind inside the frame. So we'll go over here to the other side and verify that our cutting edge is at the right width away from our line and I could just actually just move the glass slightly and back again okay now I'm ready to make my score now when I make the score there's a little nice little comfortable thumb depression here that you're gonna push down with your thumb and you're gonna consistently come straight across here nice even stroke clear across the the whole length of this without stopping okay, because if you get off if you maybe stop and then you reposition uh, not you can't do that but if you stop and reposition your lines your score lines might might not be completely in the same groove and that might cause problems with with your cut and I'm just going to go ahead and make this nice straight cut Hopefully it's going to be a nice straight cut and at the right pressure you got to apply quite a bit of pressure in order to make make the cut work. Start from the very end. So now what I'm doing guys is I'm putting a little bit of weight on this so when I go to bring this glass I'm going to bring that scoring right to the edge of the table and I want a little bit of weight on the top of the glass so the glass doesn't want to try to bow because if it tries to bow it might the crack might go one way or another depending on if it finds a defect in that scoring process. Uh, this just helps the glass to break evenly all the way across the face of the, uh, the, the glass itself. It kind of evens, evens out the, uh, the weight distribution. So, uh, I'll bring that ahead here. Again, I don't do this every day, so 
You'll have to bear with me as I kind of fumble through this. So I lined up both the top piece along the table edge. I'm going to bring the glass out. Being very careful not to bend the glass. Okay, right there's the edge. In theory, I should be able just to basically just kind of let the weight of the glass rest in my hand. And I'm, like I say, I'm still giving it support with my hand. You see here, this is a piece of uh, of U wood, so it's a pretty heavy wood, but it's just going to give me a little bit of extra pressure. And now I'm going to give the glass support and give a little downward snap. Now we got another cut to get the 40 inch side. Okay, now we're back to putting this line back on the solid table. And we'll line up our straight edge again. One bad thing here is that I didn't mention is some, you know, this is probably not the best straight edge to use because you can get, you know, some of these small fibers might be underneath your roller or your cutter. And so it's a good idea to have a clean edge on that so you don't have any interference with any obstructions such as. wood fibers and such. That cleans that up a little bit better. Now I'm going to line this up again just like I did on the other. Okay that's a nice straight straight edge. Again applying pressure here. You like see my thumb. I'm resting it on the flat area of the cutter. That's where your thumb goes and I apply pressure equal pressure down. Uh, my line is at the proper distance betwixt the edge of the guide or fence if you want to call it a fence and the line so the cutter is right to the center of that line nice equal pressure clear across from the edge you want to start that cutter off of the edge of the glass because if you start too shallow well you might you might end up breaking your glass and you'll have a bad day so we're gonna go ahead and go from the very edge of the glass Applying good pressure. Okay, that's all you got to do. Going to bring the glass out to the edge of my table. So hopefully I'm making a nice clean 90 degree snap. I'm going to bring my guide or my fence over to the edge to give it just a little bit more support. I'll put a little extra weight on there. Now some guys might say, I oh, you don't need that. And truth be known, you probably don't, especially for this particular cut. But an extra little bit of support, you know, to keep that flat across there is going to help to keep that glass nice and straight when you go to make that cut. It's going to keep it from trying to want to bow on you. The bottom of the glass at the edge of the table, in line with the perforation or the score, and I have a little extra weight on top of here with a heavy piece of wood. Um, not too much pressure. So I'm going to take both my hands. Just snap that off right just like that. And it makes a nice clean cut. It's kind of funny usually when you do something like this. You get all set up. You set the camera up and you forget a step or apply the pressure in the wrong place because you're worried about doing such a great job and on videotape that's usually when you're going to see the fail uh, this happened to be a successful one so glad you guys experienced the right way to do it so if you cut glass let us know techniques that you use that uh, are, have been successful for you now that I got that cut I can go ahead and bring it back out to the site and install that into the greenhouse. So right now I'm just temporarily putting the glass in place. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna put it in permanent. This whole system here needs to be redone. It's weathered pretty bad. So the wood needs to be either replaced or 
cleaned up and refinished but for right now I'm just going to temporary it up until summer comes around and I have a little more time to work with it. Remember the comment that I made inside the shop about things usually failing on you when you're on camera? Okay, well it happened to me. So, as you can see, I have a break in the glass. I wasn't prepared. I thought I'd cleaned up all of my shims or pieces that go in here and hold the glass in, but they were not cleaned up and they were not prepared. So, single-handedly I tried to hold the glass up there, prop it up with a piece of uh, a stick, wind come along and push the glass out and broke the glass so anyways I got a, I got a break in here but anyway other than that um, you gotta think steps ahead and when you get in a hurry usually stuff like this happens so anyway here we are uh, we got a break in the glass but other than that it's a success so I think I have one more piece of glass in there that I can use for this project and but that's gonna have to work for now Anyway, um, other than that, everything worked perfectly, <laughs> but that's how you cut glass. As far as the video is concerned, I got the message across that I tried to communicate, and that is how to cut glass, not necessarily how to install it. Anyway, I hope you guys got something out of this, if nothing else, a chuckle. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Take care, and God bless. <laughs>